Well, hi everybody. Um, I want to tell you about uh, something new that's happening at New Life uh, that some people might find very helpful. Uh, what a strange time this has been. Um, from other church leaders I've talked to, uh, it's now perhaps a more challenging time for churches, for local churches, than it was at the beginning um, of the coronavirus. Um, it's like at the beginning we all rallied round um, and uh, we started our Sunday live stream, which uh, I think went very well, uh, thanks to Phil and his family. Um, and uh, people engaged, they had a real sense of it being family. Uh, we gathered in uh, home groups online, we, we prayed, we did Bible study, uh, we did the youth group, and um, it seemed to work uh, pretty well, actually. Um, but actually now, um, when we were just getting used to this idea of the lockdown easing and the thing at some point hopefully not too far away um, being um, possible, um, it seems to have got harder. People seem to be a little weary and you sense that people are tiring of this whole communication process. So um, we wonder whether there isn't something new here. It looks very likely that churches won't be able to meet together to worship, to greet, to eat, to drink, to hug um, until the new year possibly, which makes it very, very tough. And it seems harder to hang on in there. Um, Hebrews 10.25 says this, it says, Don't neglect to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. And this is a time where we really need to get together to encourage one another. Do you remember those uh, nature programs of the lion attacking the herd of wildebeest or whatever it was? And um, the strategy was that uh, they would make the herd run and then the weakest and youngest would fall behind and they are the ones who would be devoured. And there was safety in being in the pack. And this is a biblical principle. 1 Peter 5.8 says this, it says, be alert, it says, and be on the watch for your enemy the devil who uh, roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And it doesn't say he might, it says he is roaming. So we need to be watchful of his strategies. We need to do more, as much of this meeting up thing as we can. Bob and I feel at the moment that we have two focuses. One is to continue with the, uh, the streamlined Sundays and just make them as, uh, as much of a blessing to as many different age groups and people as we can. And we and others are really working hard on that. And then secondly, uh, we feel it's really important to connect people in small groups where possible. Now, obviously, some uh, uh, home fellowship groups are working really well, and so we wouldn't want to disturb the good work that they're doing. But there are actually quite a number of people without uh, a home group or whose home group has temporarily come to a stop. And uh, we've been praying about how we can meet that need. And we feel to throw in a, a new, smaller kind of group, uh, which we're calling a connect group, which is made up of uh, groups of three to five, um, it's something that other churches have used and seem to have worked particularly well during this pandemic. Now we've shared this idea with some who are currently uh, not in a small group and it seems to hit the target for them. So these connect groups will be made up of people who feel they could be honest with each other about their needs and struggles um, who would maybe share what they are reading, something really simple, probably very short. Um, it could be by WhatsApp, could be by uh, Zoom, different ways, any way that they could just get together and encourage each other. And obviously to pray together and to encourage one another in God. The groups would be single sex and we would run them through to say Easter before reviewing them so that nobody would feel stuck in their group. It's actually some encouraging stuff about groups of three in the Bible. First of all, there's the Trinity itself, the great community of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus, out of the twelve, he had a, another group of three, uh, which was Peter, James, and John. And I guess that those three had a special kind of fellowship around their own experience 
of Jesus. And then we have this incredible promise where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst. So here's the plan. Um, I will contact um, uh, anyone who's not currently in a small group and see if they want to join a connect group. Secondly, I'll then find out how they feel uh, about who they could connect with and probably, possibly throw in a couple of suggestions. And then we will prayerfully and carefully put these groups together. And if you're already enthusiastic about this kind of idea, do get in touch because we want to get this thing rolling as quickly as possible. So thank you for listening. And uh, I will write all these things down uh, for us, uh, for you to read in detail. Thanks for listening.